Hey friends, welcome to CodeEdge. In this session, we will see how to deploy Spring Boot application in the Kubernetes cluster. So for creating a Kubernetes cluster, we are going to use Minikube on our local system. So here we are not going to use any external platform for deploying or creating a Kubernetes cluster. So here we will first create a Spring Boot project in which we will create the REST API, which will be a simple REST API, which will return a simple message. Then we will dockerize that application with the help of Docker. Then we will create a Kubernetes configuration and deploy it into the Kubernetes cluster with the help of Helm chart. So we will also see how to define custom domain name in the ingress service so that whenever user call the custom domain name, ingress will accept that request and it will forward that request to the service using the routing configuration in the ingress service. Then service will forward that request to the particular pod. We will also see basic concept on the ingress and the services. So these are the prerequisites for this demonstration. So you should have Docker installed on your machine. You can install Docker from the official website of uh, Docker or there is an alternative. You can use Colima for installing the Docker engine on your local system. Then next you require Minikube for creating a Kubernetes cluster. Next, you require the Helm chart for creating the Kubernetes configuration and deploying it into the Kubernetes cluster. So next is a kubectl command. It required to run the Kubernetes commands on your terminal. And the last is a, your favorite IDE and the JDK. So before moving on the demonstration, let's understand the basic concepts. So why do we need services? So ports are transient resources and each port get its own IP address. Now let's take an example. So we have this Kubernetes cluster here and in which we have deployed pods. So on one of the pod, we have deployed a front-end application. On another pod, we have deployed a back-end application. And this front-end application is connected with the back-end application using the IP address of back-end application pod. Now due to some reason, let's say back-end application pod get terminated. So Kubernetes will create the new pod and it will get the new IP address. Now our front-end application was connected with the back-end application using the back-end application pod. So as back-end application pod got the new IP address, so our front-end application will get failed to connect to our back-end application. And it will create the issue in our front-end application. Now to resolve this issue, what we can do? We can create the service. So whenever we create the service, it will get the stable IP address from the Kubernetes. Now service get connected with the pods and user can access the application with the help of service. Now if you go back to our previous example, let's say we have deployed our front-end application on the multiple pods. So let's say front-end application pod want to connect with the back-end application pod. So how they can connect? They can connect with the help of service. Okay. So let's understand few more benefits of services. So service play a crucial role in enabling communication between different parts of your application. So first benefit is service discovery and the stable IP address. So service provide a stable endpoint for accessing a group of pods, regardless of change in the individual pod IP address. So it simplifies the service discovery for your applications. Next benefit is load balancing. So service distribute the incoming traffic across the pod that that service manages ensuring that requests are evenly spread across the pods. So load balancing improve application performance and availability of your application. Next is a internal networking. So service allow pods within the same Kubernetes cluster to communicate with each other easily by using service DNS name or a stable IP address. Next is a exposure of application. So service can expose your application to the external world or a other part of your infrastructure. So Kubernetes provide various types of services to expose application as needed. And the type of services we are going to see in a moment. Next benefit is a name resolution. So DNS name can be assigned to the service so that DNS name can be used for name resolution. So this simplifies the configuration of application that need to access other services in the cluster. And last one is a high availability. So service ensures that even if some of the pod get failed, the application remains available as the traffic is automatically routed to the healthy pod. So we have seen the example like 
if one of the pod get failed in the backend application still our front end application can access the pod because we have connected to the service and service will route the traffic to the healthy pod now let's understand the different types of services so there are different types of services first type is node port next is a load balancer next is an external name and the last is a cluster ip so this service type provides different type of ways to expose and access your application in the kubernetes cluster depending on your specific requirements so let's start with the individual service so first is a node port so what is a node port service so node port service exposes the service on a static port on each node in the cluster so this allow external access to your service using the node ip address and the node port number so it's commonly used when you need to access the service from outside the cluster so as you see in the diagram when we define the configuration for our node port service it get the three types of port so first port is a target port so this will be your container port next port is a port for your service okay and the last port is a node port so when your user want to access your application user will call your application with the help of node port and the ip address of your node and that request will get forwarded to the service port and service will forward that request to the target port of your particular pod so next service is a load balancer so load balancer service create an external load balancer that distribute the incoming traffic to the service so it is a suitable for application that need to be highly available and load balance with external access so as you see in the diagram so load balancer is almost same as a node port service so here we have deployed the pod on the multiple nodes and the service will span across the node so that service will get only single ip address and the port so here we have defined the external load balancer so you can use any external load balancer for example aws application load balancer so when your user request for your application that request will get forwarded to one of the node on your kubernetes cluster and from the node port that request will get forwarded to the service port and from the service port that request will get forwarded to the container port so next is an external name service so external name service do not define any selectors or endpoints instead they act as a dns analysis allowing you to give your service a name in the cluster and map it to the external dns name so this is useful when you want to connect to the external service with the kubernetes style dns name now next service is a cluster ip service so this service exposes the pod internally within the cluster so it assign cluster internal ip to the service and it can be accessed only within the cluster so it is suitable for the services that should not be accessible from outside your cluster now let's understand how we are going to integrate ingress with the cluster ip service also in the demonstration we are going to configure ingress with the cluster ip service so what is ingress an ingress is a resource that define routing rule for your http and https traffic to the service within the cluster so ingress resource itself does not actually route the traffic or load balance the traffic but it serves as a configuration for the ingress controller and what is ingress controller ingress controller is responsible for implementing the routing and the traffic management based on the rules defined in the ingress resource so ingress controller is a separate piece of software that implements the ingress rule by managing the external traffic and the routing it to the appropriate service within the cluster so there are many ingress controller available in the market so we are going to use nginx ingress in our demonstration so now when user call the custom domain name that request will get forwarded to the ingress so ingress controller will use the ingress configuration from this ingress resource and ingress will forward that traffic to the particular service port number and this service will forward that traffic to the one of the pod so this is the typical configuration between the ingress and the services so you can have multiple services within the cluster and service will get connected with the multiple pods and ingress will route the traffic based on the routing configuration to the multiple services so you may have questions like how ingress know which service to call okay and how to 
configure custom host name within the ingress service next question will be which port to forward the request to so how service know which port to forward the request to and the last question is which port to forward request to okay so how service know on which port number it should forward the request within the pod so our first question was how custom host name map to service and the second question was how ingress know which service to call okay so this is our ingress configuration so here we define the kind equal to ingress and this is the specification for your ingress service so here we are defined the host property in which you can define your custom host name and this is where we define the rules configuration now next question was how ingress know which service to call so this is our service configuration in which you can see kind equal to service so here in the metadata section you can give name to your service and that same name you can use in the ingress configuration in the service section and how to do port mapping within the service and the ingress so you can use the port section that we define the port as a 8080 that same port we can define in the ingress in the port number section now our next question was which port to forward the request to so how service knows which port to forward request to so this is our deployment configuration in which we have defined our pod configuration in the template section and we define the number of pods using the replica section okay next within the pod we define the container and within the container we can see we have defined the container port now in the service we define the selectors and in the selectors we define the certain names that name should get match with the labels in the template section okay so this is how we can, we are connected to the uh, pod using the service now next question was which port to forward request to so from the service how to map the port with the pod port so in the service section you can define the target port and in the deployment uh, configuration you can define the container port so these two port will get mapped with the each other so whenever we get the request on the service the service will forward that request to the container port okay so don't get overwhelmed with this configuration so we are not going to create this configuration manually for this purpose we are going to use helm chart so helm chart will create configuration for us and we are going to change only the certain values within the kubernetes configuration so let's get started with the demonstration so we will first create the project using a spring initializer so let me give it a name as a spring boot on minikube let me give the same name in the artifact so i am going to use java version 17 and build system will be using a gradle okay so let's add dependency for our rest api so dependency will be spring web and so let me generate this project and open into IntelliJ. So our project is initialized. So let me create a test controller here. So I'm giving name as a test controller in which we will create a simple REST API. So let me annotate it with the REST controller and let's add a method for it. So I'm using get mapping. Let's add some root like slash data. And here we will return a simple message. So message will be written. This is message from pod. Okay. So this is a very simple REST API because we just want to get some response from the pod. Now let's go into the build.gradle file and here we are going to remove this version. So we don't want to give any version to our jar. Now to dockerize this application, what we will do, we will create the docker file. So make sure this app should be small case. So let me create the docker file and let me copy the script for the docker file. Okay, so let's understand the command. So first command is to use the image file using the JDK 17. Next is we are exposing our application on the 8080 port. Third command is to add the jar file in the Docker. So our jar file is going to create into the build slash lips folder. 
and we are going to copy this jar into the docker and the last command is to execute our application or to run our application now next we will build our project so let me go into the terminal let's cd into our project directory okay so this is my project directory and let's run the command to build our project so command will be gradle w clean build okay so build is successful if you go back into your project directory so here it has created the build folder and in the lips folder it has created the jar so this same path should be there in the add command of your docker files now next we will create the docker image of our application so let me go into the terminal now before executing the docker command please make sure that docker is started on your local machine so i already started the docker on my local machine so command to build the docker image will be docker build hyphen t then your image name so we will give image name as the same as a our jar name so let me copy it and next enter dot here and let's press the enter okay so our image is created if you want to see the image you can run the command called docker images so here it has created our image with the latest tag okay let me clear the terminal now we will run our docker container okay so command will be docker run hyphen p 8080 colon 8080 that we have exposing 8080 port here and our image name okay so image name is spring boot hyphen on hyphen minikube let's execute this command okay so our application is started successfully so let's go into the browser and we will call our api so api url will be localhost colon 8080 slash data okay so we are getting message that is this is message from pod now what we will do next we will create the kubernetes configuration so let me go into the terminal let's stop this application let me clear the terminal and to create the kubernetes configuration we are going to use helm chart so command will be helm create and here we will give the directory name for storing our kubernetes configuration so i am giving a name as a ytqba chart okay so you can give any name to your directory so your kubernetes configuration is going to create in this directory okay press the enter button so it has created the configuration for your kubernetes so if you want to see what it has created so you can use the command tree and your kubernetes directory that is ytqba chart so you can see it has created the directory structure like this so what it means it contains the chart.yaml file which contains the information related to your chart then next is a chart directory so chart directory contains the charts on which your charts are dependent next is a template directory so template directory contains the templates for your kubernetes configuration resources like your deployment then ingress etc and the last is a values.yaml file which contains the values which get used in the template configurations okay if you go back into the IntelliJ you can see the same directory is created here if we expand it you can see it has a template folder in which it contains the template configuration then it has a chart.yaml file which contains the information related to the chart like version of your chart and the application version next is a values.yaml file which contains the values okay so this is a plain values file like uh, your application.properties file okay and these values get used in your templates file so let me open one of the template let's open the deployment.yaml file now here you can see what are the uh, commands you see with the values that values get used from the values.yaml file now take example from the container section 
let's take example of container port so what it says values dot service dot port so what does it means read the value from the values dot yaml file read it from the service section and from the service section read it from from the port section so if you go back into the values and if you go into the service section here so what is the command read from the values file go into the service section that is the service section next read it from the port section that is this port section so it will read the value as a 80 okay so this is how all the values we can read from the values.yaml file now next we will change some configuration according to our application so let me go back into the image section okay here we will give our image name that we have just created so our image name is let me copy from the terminal so you can do docker images and here you can copy your image name then tag will be latest next we will change the port so let's go into the service section so first we will create the service of type node port and port will be 88 okay so this port is a service port and let's go into the deployment.yaml file and here just comment this liveness prop and the readiness prop so we are not going to use in the in our demo okay so that's it with the configuration we just need to change only this certain values only now what we will do next we will deploy this configuration on the kubernetes cluster so let me go back into the terminal and here we will first start the minikube so command will be minikube start hyphen hyphen driver equal to docker So our minikube is started. Now let's run the command kubectl get nodes. Okay, so this is a node created for us by the minikube. Next run the command kubectl get service or services. So this is the cluster that created for us by minikube. Okay, let me clear the terminal. Now next command we are going to run that is for the Docker environment. So this is the command for the docker env so what is the meaning of this command so this command is useful for building the docker image directly inside the minikube so by default when you deploy your uh, kubernetes configuration on the minikube it will try to fetch image from the remote repository but we want to use image from our local system for that purpose this command is useful it will fetch the image directly from our local system Next, we will build a Docker image again. So command will be the same, docker build hyphen t and your image name. So what is your image name? So let me copy it from the values.yaml file. And last is a dot. So what it will do, this will push the image to the minikube docker registry. Now, if you want to see the image, run this command that is minikube image ls. Okay, so here you can see our image is created. Now, next, what we will do, we will deploy our Kubernetes configuration. So, command will be helm install and your chart name. So, you can give any name to your chart that is Kubernetes chart and the next your directory. So our directory name is ytcube ytcube chart okay let's execute this command so what it says it has deployed successfully okay and if you want to see what it deployed so run this command kubectl get pods okay so it has deploy one pod and if you want to see the service run this command kubectl get service so this is our service of the type node port and we are exposing the node port that is 30126 so this is the port that we got from the kubernetes dynamically okay 
now next we want to call our api of our application so it has already provided certain uh, commands to get the ip address of your uh, application but this is not going to work because this port is not accessible from your local machine because of that this will not work so normally you can access your application with the node ip address and the node port okay so how to get node ip address you can write minikube ip okay so this is your node ip address and the port will be this is 30126 but this is not going to work so what we can do we can run one command minikube service then your service name that is my chart hyphen ytcube chart and hyphen hyphen url okay so there will be two hyphens and the url and let's run this command so it is giving us a url so just copy this url and let's go back into the browser and our api will be this url slash data okay so we are getting a message from the pod so let me go back into the terminal now let me stop this service so if you want to get the more information regarding your pod what you can do you can run the command kubectl get pods hyphen o wide now next we will set up the ingress in our mini cube so let me clear the terminal and to enable the ingress there is one command that is given by minikube command will be minikube add-ons enable ingress okay so this is command to enable the ingress on our minikube so command is minikube add-ons enable ingress so let me execute this command so what it will do it will enable the ingress controller on our minikube cluster now if you want to verify this you can run the command kubectl get pod hyphen n and the namespace of your ingress so namespace name is ingress hyphen nginx okay so this is the pod for the nginx that is for the controller and it is running successfully now let's go back into our IntelliJ and here we are going to change the certain configuration related to our ingress service so let me go into the ingress section and you can see it has a disable by default so make it true next we will assign the custom host name so our host name will be ytlecture.com and the path type will be prefix okay so this is the configuration for our ingress service and next we will change the service type to the cluster ip so next we will change our version name for our chart so let me go into the chart.yaml file and here we are going to change the version of our chart okay now next we will upgrade our kubernetes cluster so you are not required to stop your kubernetes cluster we can run the update command of the helm so let me go into the terminal let me clear it and our command will be helm upgrade and your chart name so our chart name is my chart and our directory name so that is ytcube chart now you can see my chart has been upgraded now if you want to see your ingress service the command will be kubectl get ingress okay so this is our ingress service now to access our application with the help of ingress we need to do certain configuration so we will first add entry in the host file so command will be sudo vi so i'm using a vi editor to change the file and the file will be in the etc directory and the file name will be host so let me run this command so let's give you the password and this is our file so let me edit it and here we are going to add one entry that is 
and host will be ytlecture.com okay let's save this file and next we will run one more command to create the tunnel okay so this will create the tunnel with our service that is ingress port and let's run this command so tunnel successfully started now next we will call our api from our browser so let me go into the browser now our url will be ytlecture.com slash data okay so you can see we are getting message from the pod now let me go back into the terminal and let me stop this tunnel now let's say you want to add the pod so what you can do let's go into the values.yaml file and here if you see there is a replica count so what you can do you can increase the count here and after this increase version of your helm chart here and just do the upgrade command so command will be helm upgrade your chart name and the chart directory so my chart is upgraded if you do qbctl get pods command so it has started two pods now next you want to see the configuration so let's see in the deployment.yaml so this is the configuration in the deployment.yaml but you want to see how it looks after fetching these values from the values.yaml file so if you want to see the same configuration let's go into the terminal let me clear it and here you will run the command helm template and your configuration directory that is kubernetes configuration directory so our directory name is ytqba chat and let's execute this command so here you can see all your configuration that we have configured in the intellij so if you go into the service section so we have created the cluster ip type of service this is our port section okay so we have defined the ports here this is our selector then next is a deployment configuration so our selector is getting match within the deployment configuration in the template section next is a ingress configuration so here you can see this is our host name and our path with the slash path type is a prefix and this is our port for the ingress which get match with the port number in the service then next is a pod configuration so you can check your configuration directly using a helm template command next if you want to see your chart version so you can do helm list so this command will show information related to your chart so this is our revision 3 and this is your app version that we have defined in the chart.yaml this is the app version and this is our chart version number that is this version number that is 0 0.1.2 so you can see the same version here that we have recently updated okay so this is how we have configured the ingress service with the service that is of the type cluster ip and we have successfully deployed the application within the pod that's it for this lecture. Thanks for watching the video.